Hello, and welcome to another awesome tutorial. Hey, I totally acknowledge it's been about two years or something like that since the last tutorial. I'm sorry, but we're back. Yeah, last time I posted this video of, of, a, of a similar monkey head thing, and people were asking me how to make it. Uh, how to do this lighting and the cool, shiny, shiny colors. Well, that's what we're here to do today, so... Yeah, hope you enjoy, and sorry about the beeping in the background, that's going to go away. Alright, here we are in Blender, um, in a new project. I'm just going to select everything by hitting A on the keyboard and then hit delete. Uh, and then we're going to add a classic monkey head thingy. Um, so one of these guys, it's a little bit blocky and low resolution, so I'm going to add a modifier. Um, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier, it's just like, adds more polys, makes it a bit smoother. Uh, and then I'm going to apply this so that it actually bakes the, you know, new polys into the mesh so that it exports properly. Um, now the first thing I'm going to do, well, I guess it's not really first anymore, but anyway, I'm going to rename the collection to be Suzanne, which is the name of the model. Uh, this is very important. We need to make sure that the collection has the name of the DFF file that we're exporting to. Um, now the first thing that that we're going to tackle with this is the lighting. Um, now in GTA, uh, buildings and like models inside the map don't use like dynamic like lighting like you might be familiar with in Unity or whatever like the modern engines. Instead, the lighting is baked in and pre-calculated in the models. And what I mean by that is that every vertex, like every point here on the model, has a color assigned to it. And then uh, in, instead of the game figuring out like, hey, this this face here has you know light on it because there's a light up here and this is where the camera's looking, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it just um, uses these pre-calculated color values stored at each vertex, and then it just like interpolates between uh, the vertices to figure out what color to put on each pixel on on the uh, model. So. Um, what we want to do is add an attribute in Blender to each of the vertices um, so that we can store the color in there. And there's actually a, a really easy built-in way to do that. We just go to the data tab with the model selected and you can go down to the color attributes here and add a new color attribute. Um, in GTA world, this is typically, typically called just call. Um, and Make sure that the domain is set to vertex colors and we're going to be storing colors and we can leave the color as just black because we're going to be overriding it. It doesn't look like it's done anything, but indeed now like there's an extra attribute on every vertex in this model and you can access that in the vertex paint. Um, now you can see that uh, the model is effectively black because it's, you know, each vertex in the model is colored black, um, but there's still some additional lighting here which I think we need to remove because otherwise, like, you know, cause that's not how it actually will appear in the game. The game doesn't do any of this real-time lighting if we set it up as such. So to turn off the lighting, we can just hit this little down arrow thing and hit flat, and that will just disable all Blender's lighting and just use the flat colors from the vert vertices. Um, just to really drive the point home here, I'm going to select the brush color here to some, some green and just draw on the mesh. And you can see here that, like, we're like painting colors onto the vertices. And so like, if we just do one vertex here, you can see that like, it's like interpolating the colors of the four vertices in this quadrant here. So that's the general idea is that we, we can, you know, color the vertices, but we don't want to manually have to like scribble in colors to try to emulate lighting. Instead, what we want to do is we want to render the lighting onto the model, uh, and onto its vertex colors. And this is actually a really standard approach uh, back in the GTA era of games, because uh, all the buildings in GTA do this. So to actually do it, we're going to go uh, back into the object mode and let's do let's set up some lighting. So I'm going to go back into shaded or rendered mode, in fact, and we're going to add a light. So let's go add, and where are we? Light. I'm just going to add a point light and grab it and move it around. Just put it over here somewhere. The objective here is just to make it, you know, look kind of cool. So let's turn up the exposure, I guess. 
uh, maybe the power a little bit. I don't know. And I'm going to change the color to like a like a cool color, I guess. And then I'm going to do that classic lighting trick where we just duplicate the light and grab it and uh, put put another light on the opposite sort of side for, to get this sort of um, doubly lit effect. And I'm going to make this like a really cool uh, orange light. It's just a classic, um, you know, lighting 101 thing. Um, you can play around with this as much as you like. I kind of want to keep messing with it because it doesn't look that great. But anyway, that's the idea. So. Um, also, just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to make this one a little bit more blue, even though it might not look as good. Yeah, that'll do. So, now uh, it's time to actually bake this lighting onto the model. So, it's really straightforward. All we got to do is go to the render panel here, change the renderer to cycles because cycles is the renderer that supports this. And I'm going to change mine to run on the GPU so it's a bit quicker. Um, and we're going to go down to the bake panel here. The bake panel is the tool that allows you to add pre-computed lighting. But the way that it's done these days is usually uh, you bake the lighting onto a texture. You can totally do that in G GTA as well. It just wasn't as common because it takes up more space. So instead we're going to do the active color attribute, which is that vertex color attribute. Um, and we're going to bake all the attributes in, including shadows. Um, because, yeah, yeah, we want to capture this little shadow behind the ear, for example. So when we're ready, we're going to hit bake. Cool. It doesn't look like it did anything, right? But I'm going to switch back into flat lighting mode and then go into vertex paint. And we can see our color attributes have been stored in the model. And I'm just realizing I don't love the lighting that much, but it's okay. It's, this is a tutorial. So um, also just to drive the point home, I'm going to add some of our own like baked lighting in here. I'm going to change the brush color and make the strength a bit lower. Maybe use like a soft actual, softer brush, brush and then turn the strength down, turn the size up a little bit. And it's going to like paint some darkness under here. All right? Just to, I don't know. Make it a bit more stylized. Um, yeah. Um, I think that looks decent enough, right? So uh, I'm going to go back to object mode and we can get this ready to export to GTA now. All right, so to actually get this ready for export, I'm going to go to the object panel here and we'll go down to the Dragon FF export settings. I just make sure the type is set to object. Um, we're going to export normals. This is uh, not actually needed for this step, um, but for the next step where we add in the like shiny reflective surface thingy, we're going to need the normals. So I'm just going to leave that on. Um, split custom split normals is uh, is good for if you need hard edges. Um, might as well do that. All right, just interjecting here. This is me from the future. We're going to turn off the custom split normals because the model here, if we go into flat lighting you can see that the normals are actually all sharp edges that's just how this model works so if we use custom split normals and every like vertex has its own normal individual to each face then we're going to get this rough like pixelated shape right but that's what we not what we want we want it to look smooth so we're going to disable custom split normals and counterintuitively, we're going to turn off lighting uh, because lighting is actually for the dynamic lights on vehicles and then the enable modulate material color. This is more for like if you have a car or something that um, that also has uh, like vertex colors or an object color and you want to modulate that with the dynamic lighting. But we don't need that here because we just have baked vertex colors. And now for the export vertex color section, I'm going to leave both of these checked, but I think you can get away with just having one checked because we only have one vertex attribute. So I think if you only have one checked, it will just work, but I'm going to leave them both checked anyways. Now the next important thing is you would normally select building for this type of object, but for the shiny thingy that we're going to do next, we need that to have the default renderware pipeline. So I'm just going to leave that untouched. Now, importantly, we need to add a material. So I just went down to the materials panel here and 
I just added a simple BSDF like principled one, but the point is just so that we can get the Dragon FF material on there. Uh, without this, the game's just going to crash. Now I'm going to turn down the ambient lighting this or ambient shading. This is, influences how much the environment or like the weather has an effect on the, the colors because the colors are going to be modulated by the environment. Just setting it to zero reduces that amount, but it's actually not zero. <laughs> and I'm also just going to change the object color to sort of a gray. Um, now the environment map setting, that's going to come in handy next when we do that little that like shiny reflective surface thing but for now we're just going to leave that um now everything should be pretty good to go remembering that the uh collection name has to be the same as the model so i'm going to right click the mesh oh also before beforehand just just in case if you have any uh if you've made any like transformations to the model make sure you go down to apply and then hit like apply all transformations so that those get baked into the model but i haven't mine's just in the center of the world so I'm going to export collection uh, objects as DFF. So I'm going to export to the Suzanne DFF file here. Make sure it has the name of the model you want, right? And I'm going to hit only selected and make sure you select GTA SA. Um, yeah, and then let's export. And now, because of how GTA works, uh, we also need to have a collision mesh. Um, so I'm going to just use the same mesh it's not optimized, so this is not a great idea, but just, just for testing purposes. So I'm going to change the object type to a collision object and then export that. Export Dragon FF collision object. Make sure that GTA say is selected. I'm going to hit only selected and export that. To verify that um, call export worked, we can just open it up in the collision file editor. Who made this? I think it was Steve M. Am I right? Oh, uh, Steve M. Um, so yeah, just it appears, and the model, the model, sorry, the uh, call name is the same as the model that we want to use. Great. Uh, we can also open up the DFF in RW Analyze, but this might be a little bit overwhelming, and it is for me, that's for sure. So there's another tool that we can use to verify uh, models, and that's this DFF viewer. So we can open the model in this and verify that here it is indeed here and it's got some specular lighting and some additional environment lighting but that's actually kind of true to what the game does and here i've made sort of a bare bones mod loader mod i've just put the call in the dff in here and then in the uh, data folder we have gta.dat and the gta.dat we've just put the uh, suzanne ipl file and lower down somewhere or up here I, I don't know in here somewhere we've got the Suzanne IDE here and um, that just links to these files so in these files we have the IDE just the important parts here the ID number this is just the next available one this is the model DFF name this is the TXD name and we're using CJTV because of that shiny reflective surface thing we're going to do later uh, but that can be really anything if you just if you don't care about the reflection thing. Um, now in the IPL, we just have the same ID. The model name is not important, and uh, the coordinates here and the rotation, um, all standard stuff. Let's see if we can open it up in game now. All right, here it is in game, and uh, ignore the monster trucks around. But anyway, this is it. Uh, you can see that uh, the lighting is influenced by the map quite a lot by the weather. But yeah, generally it fits into the into the game pretty well. But you can see that when it's nighttime, some of the colors, some of the yellows or oranges get muted. Um, but yeah, I'm just locked at 12 p.m. here, so it's gonna cycle through some different weather conditions, and you can see what that looks like. But yeah, uh, I didn't do the lighting that great. It's a little bit blown out. But you know, it's cool to see the shadows are retained, and um, you know, it kind of fits in with the environment a little bit. But I think it's time to make this a whole lot cooler and make it reflective and shiny. All right, so in GTA, there's actually an existing object that does the kind of effect that we want. Um, so I'm going to import it here. Where am I? Import. And uh, the model is called CJ Sphere TV. It's this one here. You might recognize it from um, one of the Venturous houses. But yeah, it's this like funny sphere-shaped TV, and the orange part here is sort of like shiny and reflective. 
Um, and so we can inspect how they did that. Uh, so I'm going to go into like object uh, to edit mode and I'm going to select one of these faces here and we can have a look at what the material looks like. And you can see that the it's got an environment map enabled and it's using CJ spec. I also happen to know that it uses this particular D, uh, a TXD called uh, cjtv.txd and um, in there is a environment map texture or actually an, an ang map texture which we'll look at in a second and it also has this coefficient of one which is just like the multiplier of like how strong the reflection is and also important to note is that uh, it has the pipeline set to none that's because this environment map isn't supported in the building pipeline um, yeah, and here's all the other options that it has set, including normals being uh, set. And this is what that um, angular map texture actually looks like. You can see it looks like a sphere um, with like shininess on it. But there's actually some meaning to this. Uh, this is like a map that takes basically a normal angle and outputs what the specular would look like. So as you know, like in a 3D model, every vertex like one of the, every, every point has a normal vector, which is the direction that that vector is, that uh, point is, is facing. So a point that's like right in front of the camera is looking at the camera, right? So the normal is pointing at the camera. That's going to index right into the center of this lookup texture. Or a normal that's like facing kind of away, like at a grazing angle, is going to index somewhere up here on the texture. So you can see that this sphere literally corresponds to like the angle of uh, the normal relative to the camera and that's why it's called an angle map or an ang map or just an environment map in this case um, so when we apply that to a more complex shape like the monkey head thing we're going to get a way more interesting effect just interjecting here this is how it looks um, with a custom end map uh, i just used like a more metallic one that looks a little bit cooler instead of just like some blobs and yeah, you can see we get this way more like metal, like metal man, like thing going on here. Maybe I should have flipped it. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I think this would look better like in an interior, but anyway. So then in Blender, I'm just gonna copy the texture name from, from the telly and delete it. And then back in our object here, we're gonna go just change the object type back to a um, regular object from a collision object. And we're gonna copy that environment map setting. So we're just gonna paste uh, CJ spec in there and set the coefficient to 0.5. Of course you could use your own texture, it's just uh, GTA already has this built-in one so it keeps the style kind of consistent and it's, you know, the job's already done for us. We don't have to design our own angle map, but you could put your own entire environment map in this if you like and make it look like the object is in the middle of a beach or something. Um, and yeah, I think we're ready for export now. I'm just going to double check the uh, object properties here to make sure we have normals exported. Um, all looks good. Make sure we're in the normal pipeline. So I'm going to export this. Going into my Suzanne directory and only selected and export. And let's see if that worked in game. All right, here's how it looks in game. You can see how <laughs> there's a whole bunch of monster trucks around. <laughs> uh, don't mind that. But yeah, you can see maybe the lights are a little bit bright. Um, and yeah, it depends on the weather conditions. So you can see it's based on the weather conditions. But the important part is it's shiny. How cool is that? Um, I don't know why they didn't do more of these funny shiny objects in GTA. I think it looks really fancy. Um, and you know, you can see the collision um, shadows work well the collision object I think is too high poly because we just fell through the object just now but uh, it generally same, it seems to kind of work but yeah I think GTA doesn't work too well with these really high poly bowls but yep that's the idea and uh, yeah thank you for sticking around and I uh, hope you enjoyed making this together uh, I totally acknowledge it's been a whole two years since, or something like two years since the last tutorial. And uh, yeah, I really hope uh, I can manage to do no, no, two more tutorials in the future, but uh, thanks for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed it.